Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at some really interesting things inside of Maya. But before that, I just wanted to share with you this project that we did yesterday. If you guys are not aware, we're having like weekly live streams on Mondays and sometimes during the week. We might have one uh, this Thursday. And um, during this live stream in particular, I took this project that was sent to us by Bunti Somaya for the last portfolio review. And I show you guys how we can go from this to... That's right here. So we actually did, did not modify the models. We did not modify the textures. We just changed the composition and the light. And as you can see, we get a really, really nice improvement. So if you want to check this out, it's going to be on the live section inside our channel. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you know when we go live and you can catch our live streams. Now, um, other than that, uh, we have a couple of courses that have been released in the past couple of weeks. We have an advanced character course and or a stylized character course and the Mech Lion right over there. And you can check both of these courses in Skillshare. I'll show you the promo in just a bit. But here is a really nice castle wall that uh, we modeled and uh, we're going to be showing you how you can use something called set driven keys. Centering keys are these very interesting things inside of Maya that we can use to animate something without having the need to animate it. So usually inside of Maya, when we want to animate something, we select an object, we position it where we want, we press S to set a keyframe, and then we move on the timeline and we move it to a different position. Let's say right over here and we press S again. And what that does is it animates the object from one point to the other. However, there might be a situation, for instance, on this castle gate, where one thing, such as this guy right here, this little, um, this little, uh, like, uh, what's the word? Mechanism <laughs> will activate both the door and the little bridge right here. So let's first start by properly positioning the pivot points of our object. So for instance, in this bridge, I want the position of this, or the pivot point of this bridge to be up here. And I want the basic action of our bridge to be like right around there, okay? So my bridge is gonna be, when it starts, it's gonna be up like this. Let's actually give this 90 degrees, there we go. And I'm gonna freeze the transformation, it's very important, freeze the transformations for this one. Uh, the gate, as you can see, it's closed, but as you can see, it's actually made out of a lot of different cubes. And we don't want that, so I'm going to select the whole thing, and I'm also going to combine it into a single object. The pivot point can be anywhere. I think having it on the ground makes a little bit more sense. I'm going to press D and move it all the way down, so when we move the gate, it moves from the ground up like that. Um, as you can see, it's going to be hidden by the wall, so we're not going to be seeing where it goes, but that's perfectly fine. Then uh, over here, we have each of these like, uh, cogwheels, which are fine. Uh, the only thing we need to do is freeze their transformations, so they're at zero. This is very important. Having your clean geometry or clean topology is really, really, really important. So this guys, as you can see, will rotate one way, and this guys will rotate, or this one can rotate the other way. I know this is not the like proper mechanical way to do things, but it's going to work as uh, just as fine. And finally, I'm going to grab all of these guys right here. I'm also going to combine them. And if I isolate this right here, I want to make sure that the pivot point is set on the origin of this guy right here. So I'm gonna press a D, and with V, I'm gonna move it right around there, and there we go. I'm gonna try to match this as close as possible to the proper circumference of this thing. There we go. So when we rotate this guy, as you can see, it's gonna rotate from that specific point. Cool. So next step, we need to name these things properly. So this is gonna be our lever. This is gonna be our gate, this is going to be our bridge, there we go, and then we're going to have uh, this one's, uh, actually I'm going to show you a different method for this one, for the, for the gears. So let's start with set driven key. What is a set driven key? A set driven key is a way in which we can connect two objects without actually having to rig them together. We don't have to create a rig, we just connect them through an indirect connection called a set driven key. And the way this works is on the animation tab up here. If we go to the key options and we go to, um, to the set driven key, we can go here to set, and this is the set driven key menu. The way this works is you're going to select with the thing that's going to be, uh, we call it the driver, okay? Which is the thing that's going to move or or tell us what to do. And in this case, it's this like plunger right here. So I'm going to select the driver. I'm going to say load driver. And then I'm going to select what's going to be driven by it. And I'm going to select this one and say load a driven. And as you can see, what's going to happen here is we're going to get all of the different things that we can animate or we can connect on one side of the other. So I'm actually going to go here to options 
and I'm gonna remove the non killable attributes so that we only have like the basic stuff, which is translate, rotate, and scale. So what I wanna do is I wanna be able to rotate this guy on the X axis, and when it goes down to 60 degrees in this case, I'm gonna be lowering the bridge, okay? Actually, I'm gonna push this up like this, and I'm gonna freeze the transformations again. So we have like a full, like almost 100 degrees of, uh, of movement. So we select the lever, we select the uh, element, in this case is rotation X, which is the one that we want to animate. And then we select, in this case for this one, we also select rotation X. So we select rotation X and there we go. So we set key. What that does is, as you can see on the bridge over here, we're now gonna have a blue connection indicating that we have a set driven key. When this thing is, uh, it has a rotation of zero, this thing will also have a rotation of zero. Then I'm gonna rotate this thing 100 degrees like that. And I'm gonna rotate this thing not 100 degrees. I'm gonna rotate this at 90 degrees. Okay, this is why set driven key is really important because you can have different values and it remembers those values and does the math for you so that it knows how the proportion should work. And then we set a keyframe again. So now this thing will be controlled by the lever here. If I move the lever up and down, it will move the bridge up and down. Really cool, right? And again, it doesn't have to be the exact same element. Some of you might be like, why, why, we, why won't we just connect them from the rotation X to the rotation X of one object, like a, like a constrained rotation or something? That The reason is, as you can see, that there's a difference in the amount of degrees that one of them moves. And in order to do that properly, we can use this set driven key option. Now let's do the exact same thing, but for the door. I'm gonna bring back to, or go back to this uh, little lever here, bring it all the way up. And then I'm gonna select the door, I'm gonna load this as the driven. And I'm gonna say the same thing. The rotation X of my lever is gonna be controlling, in this case, the translation Y of the object. So translation Y. This is also why the set driven key is so powerful because you can modify a different component with different numbers from one point to the other. So we set the keyframe. And then we move this thing 100 um, units down. There we go. We move this thing. I don't know, probably something like that. As you can see, it's 13 units, a very different random number, but it's just enough to get the, 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 the effect that we want. So let's say 12, 12 units to get like an even number. And uh, we uh, set the key. So now what's gonna happen is when we grab the lever and we push it up, the door is gonna go down, the bridge is gonna go up, and this thing is gonna be closed. And when we do the opposite thing, when we move this lever down, the door is gonna be open and the bridge is gonna be lowered. So as you can see, this can create a very interesting like relationship between all of these things uh, in a way that makes it easy to animate just one thing and then modify all of the other things that are connected to it thanks to set and keys. We do that a lot for fingers uh, on the rigging side of things. So when we create a slider that opens and closes the arm, spreads them out or spreads them in, like there's a lot of different things that you can do and set and keys are really, really, really powerful. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about rigging, about set and keys, animation, and stuff like that, we have all of these courses available in Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're gonna be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. Now, we're not done. We're still gonna do a couple of extra things right here. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the um, to the gears right here and I wanna move them. So one thing I wanna do is when this thing is up, uh, let's say zero degrees, the gears are gonna be just like this. But when we move them, this gear I want it to go forward and then this thing I want it to go backwards. How can we do this? We can also do it with a set driven key but I'm gonna show you a different one for, for this one right here. This one I am gonna do with a set driven key. So I'm gonna select again, this guy, load driven, this is the gear, and uh, we're gonna uh, do the rotation X, there we go, and we key. And then when the lever is set to 100, we're gonna move this thing, let's say, same thing, like, let's say 120, Negative, negative 120 because we want this to go backwards and we're gonna key. And there we go. So now, if we move this up and down, 
that thing's going to be moving as well. Now, the other way we can uh, connect these things is by doing something called a direct connection. So if we go to Windows, Animation, or sorry, not Animations, and Node Editor right here, we can actually load this guy and this guys by selecting them and clicking this option right here. And you can see that here we have the transform node of our lever with the connection to the bridge, to the gate, and to the gear. So this is the center driven key. As you can see, this is where the math is happening. And over here, we should have the uh, gear shape, this one right here. Let's delete history. There we go. So it's this gear shape right here. So now if we open this up, you're going to see that we have a lot of different things, such as the visibility, the controls, the parents, and stuff like that. But this gear right here should have something called a transform node. And that's the one that we're actually looking for. So I'm going to select both of them, get the uh, elements right here, and it should be, where is it? Where is my transform node? Did I delete history? The history for transformation. There we go. This is the, the gear transform node. That's the one that we want. And we want uh, this one as well. There we go. So we want the transform node of the gear and the transform node of the lever. And if we open them, you're going to see that we have access to all of the different elements. So what I can do is I can literally connect the rotation of the lever to the rotation of the gear. And if this lever moves, the rotation of the gear is also going to move. This is a direct connection. So however, like degrees of movement we add to this lever, those degrees of movements are going to be transferred to the other one. So as you can see here, no matter how much or how little I do this, it will automatically animate things. And this is why Maya is a really powerful software. You can do this in other softwares as well, but having the flexibility to do here in Maya and get all of these things working in just one little movement is amazing. I'm going to show you two more things here that I, I think are really important. First of all, it would be very nice if we could block the amount of movement that we give this thing right here, because right now we can go like into different directions and that might broke the, the, like the things. So in order to make sure that we don't break this lever, I'm going to go to the attribute editor to the lever, to the transform attributes. And then we have this thing called limit information. So on the limit information, I'm going to go to the limit in the rotation X. Currently, as you can see, the maximum amount is zero. I want this to be zero and the minimum amount is going to be minus 100. So now this should only allow me, or actually uh, the minimum is going to be zero and the maximum is going to be 100. There we go. So that way I'm not going to be able to go more than 100 or zero. So I'll only be able to go here and that's going to be creating the full animation for element. If you want to be extra clean about this, another thing you can do is we can go to the lever over here, select everything except for the rotation, right click, and we're going to lock and hide select it. That way, the only thing that we can modify here is a rotation. And if you want to go the extra mile and you really, really want to be a uh, rig this properly, the next thing would be to add a curve and parent it so that it only moves the rotation of the element. But that's uh, like the next uh, little uh, element that I don't think we need right here. Uh, with this, as you can see, guys, we can animate something that looks really, really, really cool. And we're only moving one thing. And that one thing is animating four different elements inside of scene. Really powerful tool. Again, if you want to learn a little bit more about animation and the rigging and stuff, we do have courses available in Skillshare. And uh, yeah. That's it for, for that's it for today, guys. Again, we have a couple of extra videos on the channel. You have the live that you can check out. And uh, tomorrow we'll continue with more stuff. I mentioned that I want to do some marble designer, so that's probably gonna be it. If you want to help the channel, make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe, comment. Comments are always welcome, and I always take um, the time to answer them. So make sure to leave them there. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye bye.